All right, this is the end of course practice test for Algebra 1. This is practice test 2, actually, question number 21. The question says simplify and state all restrictions on the domain of this expression. I'm going to do it two ways. The first way that I'm going to do it is uh, by factoring. And the second way I'm going to show you is a way that you can use the calculator to sort of cheat to get the right answer. I'm not proud of the second method. I'm just, it's there. I'm just trying to give you all the options. Now, to do it the real way, which is factoring, the first thing I need to do is see if I have any um, common factors in either the numerator or the denominator. 4 is made up of 2 and 2 and 4 and 1. Well, 9 doesn't have any of those, so there's no common factor. So what I'm going to do for the numerator is I'm going to use something called slide and divide, which really should be called slide factor divide. So I'm going to use slide and divide. What I'm going to do is circle the first number and I'm going to slide it over to the end. Since it's multiply in the beginning, it's still multiply. So I do 9 times 4, 9 times 4, so I get 36. And it goes away from the front. Now, I can factor, so I need to set up a factor set correctly. By the way, the second sign of this set, so this plus here, tells me whether the uh, my answer, the signs are going to be the same or different. In this case, it's positive, so they're going to be the same. These signs don't automatically come down to your answer. Since this is positive, this means my answers are going to be the same. The first sign will tell me that they're both going to be negative. So this is x minus, and this is x minus as well. If the second sign were, mi were minus, so it said 12x minus 36, then the signs would be different. And it doesn't matter which order you put them in, as long as you put the, uh, use the middle number to tell you what your answer is going to be. And maybe the next one works like that. We'll see. And I think it does. So that'll be perfect example time. Now, I'm going to do a factor list for 36. 1 and 36, 2 and 18, um, 3 and 12. What I'm looking for is a factor set, and since these are the same, that I can add together to give me the 12 that I'm looking for. 4 and 9. Um, 6 and 6, and that's it. There's the group I'm looking for, because 6 plus 6 is 12. So it's x minus 6 and x minus 6. So that's slide. Now I need to do to the divide. So I'm going to divide my second numbers, my minus 6's that I just punched in, by the 4 that I originally slid over in the beginning of the problem. I need to reduce the fraction. So I get x minus 3 over 2 times x minus 3 over 2. Now the reality is I can't keep fractions. So this number, this 2 gets bumped back up. So it's almost like it slides back in front of that 2. 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3. So that's slide factor divide, or slide and divide. And I'm going to go ahead and write those up top to make my life easier in just a minute. So that worked. Now, my other group, or my denominator, I need to go ahead and factor out those as well. So mm, there's no com there one x makes it difficult to pull out a common denominator. So I'm just going to slide this over. It becomes x squared minus x minus 6. It might make your life easier to put a 1 there. Makes it easier to see. Now, the second sign here is a minus. So that means my answer signs are going to be different. So x plus and x minus. In my original one, by the way, if this sign had it been plus and the first one had also been plus, the answer would have been x plus 6 and then x plus 6 in that step. But whatever it is, it is. Anyway, now I need to do a factor list of the factors of 6 to see if I can get one that will factor its way down to 1. That's the goal, really, here. So um, I've got 1 and 6. I've got 2 and 3. And 2 times 3 is 6. And since the signs are different, it means I need to subtract them to get my answer. I need to make sure that I come up with a negative 1, so the bigger number in the factor set needs to go behind the minus. So this becomes minus, and this becomes plus. I have videos on slide and divide if that's confusing, but I thought I'd go through it a little bit here. So now I need to do my divide part. So I need to divide by 2. 2 divided by 2 gives me 1, so that one's okay. I can leave that one. On the other side, I can't uh, reduce 3 minus 2 like I did before. So once again, I need to bump slide that 2 back up in front. And now that's what my denominator looks like when it's um, when it's uh, factored out. 
So I'm going to look for answers on or parts of the numerator and denominator that are the same, so I can cancel them out. The reason I can do that is if I have 5 times 2 divided by 5, I could do 5 times 2 is 10 divided by 5 gives me 2, or I can cancel out if I have the same on the numerator and denominator, as long as it's a multiply relationship, 2 would be left. So what I'm going to do is get rid of stuff that I have in common. They both have a 2x minus 3, so what I'm left with is 2x minus 3 over x plus 1. So that's my answer. Now I need to look for restrictions in the domain. The restrictions in the domain portion refers to, is there anything I can plug into the denominator and make it 0? Because you can't divide by 0. 5 divided by 0, well, you can't do it. It doesn't work that way. So I need to see if there's anything I can plug into, into the denominator for x and get a, uh, a 0. So what I'm going to do is set x plus 1 equal to 0. Um, so I subtract 1 from both sides, and I get x minus 1 being my restriction in the domain. So I'm going to look for the answer choice that has 2x minus 3 over x plus 1. Well, they all do. And I'm just going to look for my restriction in the domain, which is, of course, x is equal to negative 1. Or x is not equal to negative 1, because I'm not allowed to do that. That is a restriction in the domain. So the answer to number 21 could be A. It's not going to be B. Could it be D? Absolutely it could be D. Now, you may have heard me say that you have to find out if it's in the denominator, but it's the denominator before you do your uh, reduction. So this denominator here, that's what I need to get rid of. So I'm going to make a little space for myself by cleaning out a little area. So I need to have 2x minus 3 equals 0. Add 3 to both sides. Divide by 2. X can also not be equal, equal to 3 over 2, which is why A is not the only answer. There's two parts to it. That's what makes it difficult. This could be a restriction in the domain as well, so I can say with confidence that D is the correct answer. Um, the reality is that's one way to do it. Just make sure that you factor everything out. You uh, get rid of what you have in common. You need to go ahead and look at restrictions in the domain. Another way that you could do it, by the way, you could just plug in the answer choices into the domain here, into the uh, denominator, and see if it gives you zero. So do sort of a plug-in setup of 2, negative 1 squared minus negative 1 minus 3. So if you punch all that into your calculator, it should give you zero. I'm going to test it on mine to make sure that it does. I'm not using the onboard when I've got one standing in my hand as I'm working on this. Yeah, and it gives you zero. The key issue to make sure that you get this right is that you have the minus and then you have a negative one there. If you just do minus one, it's not going to give you a true result. So then you try three over two. The other issue is making sure that you plug x in for both the x value that you're trying to test in for both x's. You can't mix and match here because otherwise the variable won't have the same relationship. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one really fast while you sit there and wonder why I'm not writing anything on the board, but it is what it is. Or on your screen, I guess it would be for you. I'm writing on a board in case you're wondering. And this one gives me zero as well. So I can say with confidence that this and this are restrictions in the domain because it doesn't work. Now, that would still require you to do all the factoring, but it will come in handy in a minute. There is another way that you can do this without having to know how to do any math. Number one, you could look at the fact that almost all the answer choices are the same, except for uh, B and A are a little bit different. And B and C are the same, and A and D, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm referring to. But if you plug them into the calculator as uh, a form, as long as x is not equal to 0, this works. So set x to something. If x were 0, all you'd have to do is go into the window, change the x max and x min, like say I wanted mine to be 10 for some reason. And sometimes when you try the original, it'll be an error and you'll have to change it anyway. Type those in, graph something. I'm going to go ahead and clear out this one so it doesn't take forever to graph. So that one's graphed, and it should make my x equal to 10 now. And it does. Now, this has no mathematical value, this method. The other one is the way you should be doing it. But it is what it is. So I'm going to treat this like this part divided by this part, which means I need to put them in parentheses. So 4, use the x that your calculator gives you for graphing, or the variable, whatever variable you want, plus 9. And then it's divided by 
2 x squared minus x minus 3. I apologize for how long this is, by the way. Usually I try to make them much shorter. So you hit enter. That's the number that you're looking for in your answer choices. So I'm just going to plug in my answer choice at the top, the part before the semicolon, by the way. 2x minus 3 divided by x plus 1. See how that's the same number? So you can confidently say that 2x minus 3 over x plus 1 is the same as this. Now, it might make it a little bit more complicated because of the fact that, number one, I kicked the calculator off. Um, that means A or D could be the answer. So pay attention to what your answer choices are. Sometimes they're all different and it makes it really fast, but sometimes they're not. And in most cases on the end of course test, it just doesn't work out that way. So I'm going to test B to show you that it doesn't work, just so you know that you know this method isn't total garbage and it just happened to be everything gives you the same answer. X minus 1. See, it doesn't give you the 1.54 repeating that you've been having that you had originally. So I could mark out B and C because they're not going to give me the right answer. Then I just have to do my restrictions in domain, and that's where you do the plug-in thing for negative 1 and 3 over 2 that we already did. And then you could pick the one that both the restrictions exist. So worst comes worst. There it is to show you how to do it. The other way is much uh, more reasonably math uh, agreeable way to do it, but it's your life. You choose what you need to